we're going to move a little bit back to, to one of the hot topics of sports medicine at the moment, which is the relationship between load on the player and injury prevention and injury occurrence. And I'm very happy uh, to welcome from Dunham University, Dr. Anas, who's a professor there and the vice dean, and who's going to present some data um, on the uh, correlation of, of pre-season fitness and injury occurrence in Saudi football players. Please, the stage is yours. Thank you so much. First of all, I would like to take just an excuse me for all of you to just a clip for the organizing committee. <laughs> the second thing is my pleasure and delight to share the session with well-known figure in the world, Prof. Bah and Chris and Dr. Galbi. I try to just pronounce it the right way. So, first of all, this is, was uh, the relationship between the preseason fitness testing and engine in Saudi Arabia. From this picture, what is the message you get from these messages? For me, I got four messages. The first one, taking from Neymar, his, his expression was very pain. He's feeling really painful. The second one, from Marcelo, he's asking him, the medical team to come urgently, faster, plus he's asking all of us what you can do for us. Force to Brazilian fans. They were shocked when this happened. Is it or not? So, just in uh, our world, it, it right now is to 209 countries is uh, participating with FIFA, and it's uh, 232 million who's participating in sports and 35 million in women. Just taking from uh, 2003 years, soccer is characterized by short sprints, rapid acceleration, discretion, turning, jumping, kicking, other factors, physical fitness, psychological factors, player technique, and team tactics. These are a little bit different between the worldwide. Like in GCC, is it gonna be similar to European style? So, therefore, to, to success, to win, you have to be healthy, but also well fit. Therefore, injuries are major adverse factors in soccer players. Here are the injury incidents over the world. It's, in overall, they are similar. They are not big differences we see Netherlands and Spain and Brazil, and overall it's going to be similar. However, in Qatar, injury match, the paper by Chris, it was 2014, I think, or 15, it was a little bit differences in injuries by match, in comparing between the other countries. It's a way much, and we're going to present our Injury cost over the world, 150 US per injury. And this makes 30 billion a year. This is the most injured team in Premier League. It costs how much, how many days they left. It's really a huge number. And was about more than, well, close to 150 bounds. So in Saudi Arabia, we have four divisions. The first, the Saudi Professional League, it consists of 14, and the first league, 16 clubs. And uh, in SP, it's about uh, the most, the majority are local. So it represent 86.3, and the foreigners just 13.7. 
whereas the other hand in SP is 96% uh, are local and this year, this is the first year which is just allow the clubs to have one international, one uh, international player among them. So, this one, this study is not yet finished. So we started by a pre-season assessment. Then in case of an injury during the months, we recorded from either from, from physical therapist or from, uh, mainly from physical uh, therapist. So two team participated, one from SP and one from uh, first division, and 60 players and three years previous injury were recorded. So, here are just some of uh, our methods of uh, taking the weekly competition exposures. Just some of the number of nights per week, let's say just only one, maybe. Uh, times of 90, 90 minutes, times of 11 players, whereas the training, the duration of training, times mean number of players, and the warm-up period before the competition is 25 minutes times 11 players and friendly match was 19 minutes per 11, which mainly occur within the same team. And here are the definitions. We define the injury as a physical complaint leading to a player being unable to participate either, to fully participate either in training or during the match. And injury incidents were the number of injuries per thousand player hours and recurrence has to be an injury the same time at the same sites. So here the classification either an atrical position or a type of injury. So just the, from the from uh, bottom to the head and uh, type of injuries, fractures and muscles, ligaments and others. So the results here it's not really different from the others, but if we look into the VO2 max, we were the lower than the international, compared to the international players. I mean, uh, from European, especially from European. And the body fat percentage were goal keeper, where they are fatter. I don't know if you recognize the pictures from behind. I try to represent the GCC players. So here is uh, Mohamed Daya and here Hussein Abdullahi and others. So I just that means it's not their. This is their uh, data. Just this is the present the GCC. And the VO2 max, the external defenders were them the highest. And especially it's, it's could be just because they are their position right now is just from going from back to front and going back at the same time. So, injury location was, thigh was the most between the two clubs and the knee as well. They were the most broad minute between the two clubs. Here the injury type, also there were no big differences between them muscle and tendon were the most in, and the list was the fractions. Taking Prof. Rod Baher, the diagram, it shows that uh, fractions is going to be really rare. So, so overuse was two to three among the SP and only one among SP. And it could be that the limited resources to replace an injured quality player for SP to replace a specific player. That's why they are asking to play and not stop. So, in the severity level and the injury category, the most actually it was acute non-contact and acute contact. In both, in both, uh, from zero to three days, and, and from uh, more than 28 days were mostly acute contact in both uh, teams. In terms of injury incidence, 
back to the earlier slides that Qatar is about 14 hours. Also here, it's about 17.6 and 21.2, which could be lead to the number of match per week here in the region is not similar to the European. Moreover, the type of tactic difference between the European and GCC countries. The monthly incidence of injury. During training, the SP was higher than, and it was a significant difference between SP and Division 1. It could be that the SP club, they have, like, they started by high fitness coaches, or, or back to the coaches, they are just put a pressure on uh, the fitness coaches and physios to just get like ready for the season. And this, during the SP team, they have a jump in October. It was due to they change their technical team, their technical coaches. They came with other coach and they asked them to do more. This is why it was a little bit spike. Well, during the match, well, that's, they were similar. However, it was, they started in like X shape, so it was still, and still we are collecting the data. This is the last from the match. And re-injury, 21% in SP, or 32% in Division One, And it could be that has excellent medical support in SP. We put the in profile injured versus not injured in terms of uh, some of the fitness battery. The flexible, none of them were correlated to injuries. So, does that mean we have to stop doing a preseason fitness assessment? Or we have, we should to do it in other way. So, the last two messages I would like to, it has been proposed earlier that sport injuries are dynamic in nature and can be subjected to frequent changes. Therefore, just only one, only one pre-season assessment is not gonna be enough to do it. Therefore, a multiple assessment through the season has to be applied. Moreover, we have, we just mainly concentrated, especially in the region, we concentrated in the, core, in the injury itself and the intrinsic individual, and sometimes we neglect eccentric, which is represented the environment. I would not just share with you uh, Gabbett, Professor Gabbett, he just uh, published a paper last month or, um, or two months, which he represent the sweet spot and danger, danger zone, which could be explained the fat, uh, fatigue and improvement of fitness. Where in the green, where is the red? It was the acute chronic workload ratio, which might be has been neglected in among our fitness coaches in our region. So, the most important which I would like to share with you, especially to the bigger people, do we have to prevent or minimize the energy frequency? I will leave the, these questions for all of us. Thank you so much.